Hello and welcome to the Freeride World Tour. Our next stop is the Russian Federation for the fourth stage of this heated competition series. The best ski and snowboard freeriders will be duking it out here in the Caucasus Mountains for a shot at the title of Freeride World Champion. The 2011 Freeride World Tour is composed of six competitions held in the most prestigious freeride destinations. There are only two remaining stages of the series before the finals at the Verbier Extreme, where the crown will be passed to our next world champions. The season began in the unique and historic area of Mont Blanc with a free ride to Chamonix. Skier Aurelien Ducro and snowboarder Xavier Delarue dominated this first stop on the tour and set the stage for a very competitive season. But at the second competition in Samaritz, the French found the going tough. Delarue, caught out by loose snow in a tight couloir, was relegated to eighth place, opening a door through which American Matt Annette would charge to take the lead. An overconfident Ducro committed a potentially life-threatening error on the top of his run by launching blindly off a cornice and landing directly on the rocks more than 10 meters below. Fortunately, he was not injured. Swedish skier Henrik Vinstead seized the day with an astounding run, but at a dear price. Sustaining an injury to his ribs, he would not be able to defend his standing in the third stage at the California resort of Kirkwood. Most of the favored riders fell during on their run on this stop, and Ducro was no exception to the rule. This set the stage for Jeremy Prevost, a rookie who would claim his first major victory and upset the field by taking the lead in the world rankings. In the snowboard class, riders faced tough conditions up on Crystal Mountain and Austrian Flo Orly overtook number one seeded rider Xavier de la Rue. This puts Orly out ahead in the overall ranking, but only by a slim margin. So for both ski and snowboard, the situation remains very uncertain at the start of the fourth stage of the Freeride World Tour. There is good reason why the Russian region of Sochi is on the agenda of the Freeride World Tour. Snowfall is abundant in this valley of the Caucasus, and with the Black Sea visible from the top of the venue, we begin to understand just why the snow quality here is so highly prized by freeriders. But obviously, it's the approaching Olympic Winter Games in 2014 that is stealing the spotlight here. All across the valley, ski lifts and hotels literally spring from the ground with the prospect of the impending Olympics. This year's competition is hosted by the station Rosa Hutor. A brand new cable car carries riders to the top of the venue at 2300 meters, where they will enjoy boundless freeride terrain and untracked powder until the launch of the competition. Freeriding here is truly world class. Once again, the organizers must contend with variable weather conditions, but snowfall eventually turns to sunshine. The snow conditions are excellent, but good visibility is essential before competition can get underway. On the morning of the contest, the conditions appear to be ideal. But remember that back in 2010, after a week of waiting it out, the atrocious weather eventually forced organizers to cancel the competition altogether. So it is with an anxious eye that Nicolas Hale Woods, the tour organizer, scans the sky in the morning of competition. We've got excellent conditions, snow conditions, uh, bluebird sky, but we know that a front is coming quickly. So we're starting at 8 a.m., which is probably a record. And so it is atop the face of the Rosa Hoot Tour that the white carpet of competition will unfold. With 40 centimeters of fresh snow and a descent of around 500 meters, we can expect a very good competition here today. One of the first snowboarders to launch from the gate is none other than the gold jersey holder himself, the overall tour leader, Frenchman Xavier Delarue. 
His run in Chamonix is still fresh in our minds, but he struggled to maintain his lead in the competitions that followed. He remains at the top of the world rankings, and he has the opportunity here today to widen his gap from the rest of the pack. And Delarue is on course. Oh, we're seeing a conservative approach here for a first jump. Well landed for the Frenchman, who's taken full advantage of these wonderful snow conditions. But he stops in the middle of the face after only a few turns. A moment of anxiety flitters among the spectators and judges. We learn eventually that Xavier de la Rue had broken his binding and was forced to abandon his run. Yeah, yeah, I landed my jump. I heard this crack, but I uh, continued riding no problem. Then, whoa, it went unstable. I tried to hold it all in place and ride it all out, but man, it, it just wasn't happening. Oh, that's a big disappointment and a frustrating turn of events for Delarue. His season may have come to an abrupt end due to a broken binding. Delarue now has his back to the wall for the two remaining stages at Fieberbrunn and Verbier. Austrian Stefan Hausel has been rising steadily in the ranks, consistently earning a top 10 finish. This very fast and committed skier is definitely one to watch. And effectively, Hausel delivers the goods with a high-flying run. He charges down an original line at speed, which is difficult on such snow. Judges like to see speed, but he's going to have to show control, and that's exactly what Hausel does. He simply stomps those landings. The Austrian is really laying down a flawless run. Hausel sails into the finish area and is clearly satisfied with his strong performance. I try to make a solid, clean run. That's what the judges are looking for. Perfect landings. You know, stomp, stomp, stomp. I just I tried to launch my jumps and keep it centered, and it worked pretty well. So we're back to the top now for the young Swiss, Samuel Antematen. He's here full of confidence after his podium at the Kirkwood stop in America. At 25, Samuel Antematen is one of the youngest riders on the circuit and is riding his first season on the Freeride World Tour. After starting his season mid-pack, Antematen shown on the American stop in Kirkwood, reaching the podium for the first time in his short career. Yeah, my good result in Kirkwood really boosted my confidence, but uh, now I'm back down to earth. I'm just here to show what I can do. Antamatin is undoubtedly one of the revelations of the 2011 tour. With a strong physique, he is a very technical skier with a very clean style. He's building the experience that he's going to need to rub shoulders with the world's best. And he brings out a very good run on the top of the face. He's maintaining a lot of speed in this run. Seems like Antamatran is just having a blast on these features. He manages to get the good snow throughout his run, and that will definitely pay off with the judges who are looking closely at his choice of line as one of their criteria. Antamatin will milk every feature on this face all the way to the finish line. An excellent performance from the Swiss rider. It was not really expected to do so well today. 
all this ice cream and open Yeah, it paid off today. On the top of my run, I hit that bomb hole that uh, Xavier left, and uh, it wasn't ideal. On the bottom, I made sure not to make any mistakes, but, uh, you know, we need to score points, not lose any. Den Rahmen runterzubringen, also es ging darum, Punkte zu machen und nicht zu verlieren. And now, the tour leader in the ski category, young Frenchman Jeremy Prevost. Well, it's my first season. I'm, I'm one of the youngest riders. Quite young, really. Honestly, I, I wasn't even aiming at the world title. I was just trying to get to the finals in Verbier, maybe even, I don't know, win a stop or two. I still have to build my experience and uh, maybe try to be a little mature. Prevo is young, but he's a determined skier who struggled through two seasons in the qualifiers before landing his ticket to the Freeride World Tour. And he's quickly proven his ability to place amongst the world's best skiers. Trust me, he'll need all that technical experience and solid ability today to keep hold of the gold jersey as tour leader. And Prevo attempts a huge backflip here. Unfortunately, the powder landing blows him out and he loses both his skis. Sitting in pole position, he could afford to take a few risks today, but he's not injured. And boy, is he regretting his decision now. Yeah, I really wanted to choose a quick line and start it off all well. I really wanted to choose a quick line and, and start it off really well. I wasn't quite sure if I could nail a straight air on skier's left, but then I noticed that other cliff. I tried a backflip off it, but under rotated, but I under rotated by about a meter and landed front heavy. So it was short and intense. J'ai posé trop en avant, et donc c'était court et intense quoi. Go with me down. So back to the snowboarders now with one of the most experienced riders of the tour, the Austrian Mitch Telderer. He's had a pretty good season so far, but he's lacking a podium finish to stay within reach of the top three positions. Given the demise of Delarue, he has a nice chance to play the underdog card here today. You know this and you know that Please consider you are more than what you think you lack I feel the sorrow and all the pain Trying to create tomorrow, be happy for this day I'm getting obsessed and feeling a mess Then I thank God ask, remind me I'm blessed See, we're all afraid It is human, forgetting what you're made of Thinking that you're losing Hit the snow Oh, there's a drop very well landed Snow conditions are excellent up here today And decidedly are allowing riders to put on a good show Telderer plays that underdog card with a nice mix of jumps and beautiful powder turns. Telderer plays the underdog card with a nice mix of jumps and beautiful powder turns. We create our own reality. Everything in the world is a reflection of the me. Telderer's goal here today was to improve his overall ranking, and you can expect to see him pushing the envelope in the two remaining events on the tour. Yeah, everything went as planned. I did my best. Snow was flying all around me. <laughs> it was really good. Happy. And now the Chamonix, Jonathan Charlet, prepares to drop. He gave a podium performance on his home turf in Chamonix for the first event of the season. He's consistently delivered his best, and there's real potential in this young man who regularly gives top-seeded riders a run for their money. Oh, he starts out on the left side of the face with a relatively untracked line. And that's a good choice because Charlet finds some tasty snow conditions. And you can see he's really lapping it up. So good overall performance from the French rider who will ascend the podium for the second time this season.
You know, one snowboarder that should be monitored very closely is American Matt Annette, who took the overall lead earlier in the season, leaving Xavier Delarue dizzy in his wake. Such is the norm in a battle for the world title. Oh, and a big drop. Matt Annette sticks on a rock, goes over the handlebars, and tumbles down a cliff. His run is over, and his season as well, because Matt Annette also injures his knee in this fall. Another newcomer in the ski category is young Norwegian prodigy Torgrim Vole. He may be short in the tooth, but has no problem laying down committed runs. Well stomped first jump for the Norwegian who is flying down the face, and a spectacular high speed bail. Oh, he lands back on his skis though without anyone really understanding how he can continue his run as though nothing happened after about a 20 meter crash. I decided on doing the same line as uh, pretty much, yeah, I bet 80% of the others at the top, so I knew it was going to be a bit tracked out, but uh, I didn't know it was going to go that fast. <laughs> I had too much speed out of my first cliff, so I couldn't uh, be able to break afterwards, so I had a huge crash, but I actually think it ended up looking like a rodeo. <laughs> The atmosphere is very relaxed on the bottom of the face, a stark contrast with the tension of Henrik Vinstead up in the starting gate. Earlier this season, Vinstead won at the Freeride Samaritz, but his run also won him a rib injury, which would not allow him to defend his position in Kirkwood. Vinstead signals his return here in Russia, albeit in a questionable state of health. But all doubt is quickly dispelled with this tremendous run from the Swede. Big hits and high speed landings, this is Vincent's trademark style and he continues skiing with beautiful technique. He is without a doubt one of the most aesthetic riders on the circuit. Super uh, nervous and unsecure in the start to to know what to do in the start uh, start cliff because it was you know when the face is so narrow everybody goes the same uh, same way and it was to totally bombed out the one I wanted to do so I had to go a little bit different and then I did two really big errors in a row took it super far down the the mountain and stomped it really clean you know you can always do better. But, uh, you know, with the conditions I have, I think this was the, one of the best runs I could have done today, for sure. Next up is snowboarder Flo Orley, who took a break from competition last season and returns in full force. He's dropping in after a solid win at Crystal Mountain, but he knows he just can't hold back now. With his high bib number, Orly will encounter the same problem as Vinstead. He therefore commits to the far side of the ridge to sniff out some remaining snow. He's not very fluid through this section, but it's true that options are limited for high bibs. Nice landing off this cliff and a beautiful series of clean turns. Orly has perfect control over the risks and lays down a smooth run. Certainly one of the best of the day. Es 
Usually I stop to think after the first turn, but on this run it didn't happen that way. I had to concentrate. I controlled my jumps. I jumped really high, but just a little bit slower. You know, everything went well. I had a clean run, just a little less dramatic than I expected. And up in the start gate now, we find Aurelien Ducrot going through his warm-up. Doubt is weighing heavily on this French skier after tearing a quadricep only two days before competition. So they strapped up both of my legs. Uh, we'll see. I'm, I'm going to have to keep things simple. I really I just don't know. I'm in pain right now. I don't know how I'm going to be able to do it, but I'll try. We'll see. The bandages should stop it getting any worse, which means I can start the race. But, uh, other than that, all bets are off. Now the situation is further complicated as Ducro completely missed the first two tour stops and is no longer in overall contention for this season. He had a bad fall in Samaritz and fell heavily in Kirkwood. Now the pressure is twofold for the French skier who knows he must earn points here in Russia if he has any hope to do well overall. He starts his run aggressively, seemingly not too bothered by the injury at this point. He's skiing as fast as usual. Ducro lands his jumps with a back slap literally on his back and you can see he doesn't have the leg power needed here to stomp his jumps properly. Whoa, he's got to stay in control here and it looks like Ducro is riding at the limit in certain areas. He has much to be happy with though as this run is still one of the best of the day. Riding with an injury should be hard but Ducro holds it together. Well, the doctor told me yesterday it would be uh, tricky to start the race today, but I wanted to give it a try. I kept things simple. I nailed my airs. I skied fast. I couldn't slow down anyways because I had no power in my legs, but, you know, I came here to take the lead and I, I injured my leg. Suddenly uh, everything changed. It just became about scoring a few points and I wasn't sure what would be possible today. I, I just wouldn't, wasn't sure what my body could take. Uh, but I competed in a different way and the idea was still to score points, regain the lead and uh, go to Verbier with a strong position. And at the end of competition, it's Austrian snowboarder Flo Orly who takes home the win. Well, I have two wins in a row. I'm also first overall, but there are still two comps left, and the others won't be too far behind. I'll just continue to ride well this winter. I'm having a really good time on my snowboard, and there's no pressure. I've fulfilled my goals, so I can relax a bit. Uh, we'll see. Perhaps I can get another podium yet. Orly shares a podium with compatriot Mitch Telderer, and with the bronze today, Chamonix Jonathan Charlet. Delarue did not complete the course and therefore scores a DNF on this Russian stage of the tour. And on skis, Samuel Antimatin of Switzerland scores his first major victory. Also, natürlich, uh, gegen die Weltbesten da anzutreten ist. It's really hard to measure up to the best in the world. I, I eased into the tour and now I've found my style. I found how to use it. So yeah, we'll just see what happens next. Trailing Antimatin, Ducro manages to snatch a memorable second place. And proving his steady growth since the beginning of the season, Housel rounds out the top three. This Russian stop has therefore struck a chord with exceptionally good snow conditions for a competition. In the overall standings, Flo Orly rockets ahead of the other riders, but he'll take nothing for granted before the last two tour stages. Delarue still has a shot at number one. 
So the leader's golden jersey changes hands again as Antamatin topples the competition with this win. It's looking very uncertain in the ski category now with a different winner on each stage of the tour. The next stop in Fieberbrunn will be decisive before the finals in Verbier. Most of the favored riders now have their backs against the wall and cannot afford to slip up at this point. We'll see you in Austria in a week for the next episode of the Freeride World Tour.